Hello. Welcome to Cleveland Opera Theater's Opera 101. My name is Megan Thompson. I am the Director of Education and Outreach for Cleveland Opera Theater. And as you, if you've been following along with us this month, you know that we're in the midst of Rossini Month. So all of July, we've been talking about uh, Rossini and Rossini's contributions, the operatic repertoire. And this week, we are really excited because on Saturday, July 25th, we're going to be premiering episode one of our opera uh, mini series about Rossini's Barber of Seville. So it'll be um, episode, there'll be five total episodes between now and the end of August. And what it'll be is uh, little chunks of the opera uh, made into like a digestible art form for the digital world. So tune in on July 25th. You can find more information on our website, clevelandoperatheater.org slash experience. And that'll give you all of the information. Uh, we'll post the link when we have the link ready. And you can tune in and see some amazing singers sharing some of this amazing music. So if you're tuning in with me right now, you probably want to learn a little bit more about Barbara Seville before we have our mini series uh, premiere on Saturday. So I'm going to keep it really simple because you're going to hear so much music over the next five episodes of the mini series that I don't really need to share that part with you today. Um, and you probably know a lot about Rossini, so I'm not going to get too stuck up on his details and his biography either. So I think for today, I just want to hit a few of my favorite quotes that have come out and just a few uh, fun facts about Rossini and the Barber of Seville. So let's get started. Uh, as you probably realize, Rossini's A Barber of Seville was one of the earliest bel canto operas. If you are not familiar with the idea of bel canto, our uh, education and outreach associate, Stephanie Russo, had, did a great episode uh, a few weeks ago. So you can find that on our YouTube channel. So go ahead, look that up. Um, but basically, this is the transition out of the romantic era, or out of the classical era, rather, into the romantic era. So Rossini and Donizetti were, like, um, right around the same point, doing very similar work. You know, they're they're colleagues at this point in a way, maybe not colleagues, but contemporaries. So Rossini's work uh, it was prolific. I mean, he wrote 40 operas, 18 cantatas, 24 different instrumental pieces, six sonatas, 10 sacred pieces, at least 52 secular pieces, quite a bit of music. Um, but you're probably sitting here thinking 40 operas, man, I can't think of 40. I can only think of one, two, three, because there are only a few that have really lived on. Um, as much as his work was well received at that moment, a lot of it didn't really stick in the repertoire. So, but Rossini was famed to say things like, give me a laundry list and I will set it to music. So he really felt very confident in his abilities to write anything. And he was a very fast composer. So for instance, the Barber of Seville, the opera we're talking about today, was written in a grand total of three weeks. That's incredibly fast for a full length opera, um, especially one that was actually good. Uh, but he was notorious for this. He was also really known for uh, procrastinating, waiting to the last minute, putting things together that way. Um, so, but it was just really interesting. Um, he really admired Mozart. So you will hear some very Mozartian uh, components to his operas, which is always fun to listen for that influence in there. Um, and like uh, specifically, and I would say like the harmonics and the way he sets stories would be where I personally really hear that Mozartian influence. So he was also known to be a bit of a tyrant of a conductor. Um, he actually once sent his own father home during a rehearsal for playing a wrong note. Um, I kind of found that to be a little amusing, at least to me. Um, but despite all of it, you know, folks did enjoy working with him. He did always have people to, to play. Um, there was actually one legend that Rossini once dropped a piece of music that he was working on. And instead of getting out of bed to pick it up, he actually just started over. And so when a friend actually came over and picked up the dropped music, Rossini decided to turn that into a whole new piece. So there are all sorts of little quirky stories about Rossini. Um, I couldn't even begin to tell you all of them, but if you're interested in that sort of thing, this is the kind of stuff I would definitely encourage more reading on because he was just a very interesting person. But back to Barbara of Seville. 
So what actually spurred him to write The Barber of Seville? I think that's an important place to start, right? So he's only 23 years old at this point, and the Duke, um, Duke Francesco Sforza Cesarini decided to commission Rossini to write The Barber of Seville to premiere at the Argentina Theater. Um, this is the story of the beautiful Rosina, whose elderly guardian, Dr. Bartolo, uh, wants to make her his own uh, while restricting her freedom of movement. Uh, meanwhile, the young lady has fallen in love with the handsome and far more age appropriate Count Almaviva, uh, who really just wants to ensure that she's with him. Um, it, not the thing is the the complicated part there is the count's very rich. He wants to make sure that she loves him, not his money. Uh, and then the young couple are abetted by Bartolo's barber, the barber of Seville. Get it, um, Figaro. Some of these names might sound a little familiar. You might recognize them from maybe the Marriage of Figaro by Mozart. This is part of the same storyline, but the Barber of Seville actually takes place prior to the Marriage of Figaro. So this is kind of the prequel to the Marriage of Figaro. Um, so in this initial commission, again, Rossini is 23 years old. He's still a baby. He's still very new to opera. He's written a few at this point. That's how he got this commission, but he's, he's still young. Um, most of the singers who were commissioned for this opening were actually paid more than he was for writing the entire thing. Um, and the other really important fact about the Barber of Seville is another composer had already written this story. So Paziello, very famed composer of the era, we don't really listen to a lot of his music now, but at the time he was really famous, did a lot, very well loved. Um, he had written one in 1782 named Alma Viva, or, I'm sorry, I think it was written as the Barber of Seville and then Rossini was gonna actually name this Almaviva to, to, you know, stay away from that, to not create confusion, to be respectful to Paisiello. Um, but then after Paisiello died, you know, he, he's old up there. Rossini actually wrote to him. He's like 75 at this point. Rossini wrote to him and said, hey, I'm not trying to challenge you. I really respect your opera. I just really love the story and I think it would make a great storyline. Um, Paisiello was not super thrilled about this. It, it, there was a little bit of conflict there. Um, there was also a conflict in some of the audiences, but uh, I'll try to mention that when we get, get a little further. But uh, so he's, he was commissioned by the Duke Cesarini, right? Unfortunately though, four days before the premiere, Cesarini actually had a seizure and died. He was only 44 years old. So he never actually uh, got to see the premiere of the Barber of Seville, um, which is definitely very sad. Um, the other thing you might be recognizing as we keep talking about Figaro and the Barber of Seville and Seville, 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 you might remember uh, a little throwback in our popular culture, a Rabbit of Seville. Um, Looney Tunes, um, the Rabbit of Seville, did a whole episode about this, this storyline and had you know, Bugs Bunny doing like the shaving and being the barber. Um, so he was, he was the Figaro to torment Elmer Fudd, just like he would in any other episode, but this was all opera focused. So a lot of folks remember that particular episode as being one of their entry points into opera. And again, if you don't remember it, that's totally fine. It is on YouTube. You can YouTube the Rabbit of Seville and you can find some great clips. So I highly recommend that too. Um, I would say that this was one of the most important steps in opera. Um, it was received very well, um, but what ended up actually happening is a lot of Rossini's other operas fell out of fashion because this one really took over, which is part of the reason we don't really hear a lot of Rossini's other operas today. We hear usually this one and La Cenerentola and then maybe uh, La Donna del Lago, um, which I'll talk about a little bit more next week. Um, but we don't really hear a lot of his other work. So out of those 40, you probably only know between one and three of them, unless you're a really hardcore Rossini fan. Um, and then Rossini, the other thing that's really cool about this opera, in the classical, in like the Baroque really, Baroque era and classical era, 
it was really known that singers would add their own ornamentation to arias and they would show off their vo voices. So a lot of the Baroque operas, especially, you would hear a verse uh, the way the composer had written it. Then you'd hear like the B section that contrasted the verse. And then they would go back to that original verse, but they would have all sorts of ornamentation. Well, Rossini wasn't super into singers just making things up. He really wanted the music on stage to be his music. So he actually wrote out all of those cadenzas and all of those ornamentations for his music. So in Barber of Seville, a really famous example of this would be Rosina's aria, Una Voce Poco Fa. He actually sat and wrote out all of those ornamentations. Sometimes you'll still see singers who change things slightly, do some of their own work, but uh, most of it is really in the music um, compared to earlier music there was a tremendous amount written out for Una Voce Poco Fa that previously would never have been written out. Um, I personally love to listen to, Chil to Chilia Bartoli for this opera, uh, for this aria. I am a little biased though, so definitely basically any version that you find from a well-known singer is gonna be spectacular. And just like I actually suggest with any opera, I recommend listening to a few different singers to hear different voice types, to hear different color, and also just to see like different interpretations from the acting standpoint. Because it's really, that's part of the beauty of opera is it's storytelling. So it's really fun to see different actors and singers, perceptions and interpretations of the story. So totally take a look at that. I think that's great. Una voce poco fa. Um, and then what, what is also interesting here is, uh, here being the opera Barbara Seville, Rossini was really known to create characters who could uh, do like a lot of patter. So he was known for using character types with the patter baritone who could just spit out words at a breakneck speed. And so it's a really, you know, impressive display of that vocal agility that a lot of baritones don't get to show off in other roles. So Figaro, uh, for instance, in the famous Figaro aria, gets to just go crazy with this. Um, we actually showed some of this. Um, Young Kwang Yu sang for us in June, and that's a great opera aria to look up. And again, I'm sure we're going to be including that in one of our five episodes, just don't know which one yet. So definitely check that aria out if you aren't familiar with it, or even if you are, just re-listen to it. It's so much fun when you're thinking about how fast the singer has to spit those words out. Uh, and then I'm, I'm wrapping up, I promise, but one of the things I also wanna bring up is Beethoven. So Rossini's work got to Beethoven and Beethoven was, uh, it was very impressed, but he specifically said, so, you're the composer of the Barber of Seville. I congratulate you. It'll be played as long as Italian opera exists. Never try to write anything else but opera buffa. Any other style would do violence to your nature. And Rossini's like, uh, you know, dude, I've already written some serious operas. You know, like, I can do that too. And Beethoven then replied, yes, I looked at them. Opera seria is ill-suited to the Italians. You don't know how to deal with drama. And uh, he wasn't 100% wrong. If you think through a lot of the Italian opera at this point in time of classical and early bel canto style, there's not a whole lot of opera seria going on. The opera seria and the Italian tradition really came in later. Um, and so it's not, you know, completely off the table, just wasn't really what was, you know, going on really big time in, in Italy. So, I always think that this is all fun, definitely highly recommend it. There's lots of other times where Rossini's music was used in popular culture. Um, I, I would say the Figaro aria is probably the one a lot of folks have heard in movie fragments, commercials, things like that. Um, and then obviously Rabbit of Seville. So definitely go look that up. Again, the reason why this week we're focusing on the Barber of Seville is because Saturday is the premiere of episode one of our Barber of Seville mini series. So definitely check out clevelandoperatheater.org slash experience to learn more about the mini series, the subsequent dates of the other four episodes, but tune in on Saturday for episode number one. This is all presented as part of our Opera for All summer series. Usually we would be in a park near you, but this summer for obvious reasons, we are on a virtual summer series tour. So on the upside, this means you can throw your own backyard party. 
So I highly encourage you to get your friends and neighbors together, have a socially distant, socially safe viewing of the five episodes of Barbara Seville's miniseries. And as always, if there's a specific topic or question you have, please drop it in our comments. Every, time, every day, um, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, we have Opera 101 on our YouTube live channel. And we're always looking for new content, new questions to answer and approach. And then on Wednesdays, we have Page to Stage, where Scott Skiba, our executive artistic director, brings a guest onto the show to talk about how opera really makes it from conception to the stage. And then Fridays, definitely join us for Maestro Domenico Boyajan's Maestro's Corner, where he brings industry professionals in for an interview. And so you get to learn about all sorts of different aspects of the industry from people who've been doing this for a long time in high level circles. So all sorts of great content. You can view our older episodes on our YouTube channel. You can search through everything. There's lots of stuff out there now. It'll keep you plenty busy. And of course, sign up for our mailing list so you stay apprised of all of our exciting events. ClevelandOperaTheater.org, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and of course, follow us on YouTube so you can keep all of this content coming straight to you. That's it for today. I am Megan Thompson, Director of Education and Outreach. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or anything else. Otherwise, join us tomorrow for more about the Barber of Seville. Have a great day.